Good evening. This is Professor Rush once again, back after a short sabbatical. For those of you looking for part two of the last Ancient Alien presentation, you can listen to this at www.gnosticmedia.com. The presentation is entitled, Ancient Aliens, Myth in the Making. Tonight, discussing the construction of Mormonism in a brief manner, I want to reveal to the world the missing golden plates allegedly presented to Joseph Smith by the angel, but then confiscated by the angel not to be seen again until today. The ancient alien hunters believed that the angel was a space creature, an alien, and this has to be one of the most absurd and preposterous things I've ever heard coming from this group, although there are many other uh, suggestions that they make uh, out of their scientific thinking that come very close. Their efforts, lacking in anything that represents scientific investigation, have contaminated the whole study of the possibility of contact with aliens in the past. One has to wonder who funds these programs, the military, the Catholic Church, perhaps the Mormons. Uh, there's some research for you, an extra credit project perhaps. In any case, before I reveal the golden plates and their hiding place, I must give you a brief history of what is known as Mormonism, which includes numerous offshoots, including the group in El Dorado, Texas, where a bed was installed next to the altar in the temple, no doubt for the cult leader to lie down on after giving a lengthy sermon. These offshoots inform, in a historically detailed manner, the steps that occur in the formation of what is commonly known as a cult. So let me take you through some of the history and construction of this cult and the golden tablets that brought the Mormon fantasy to action, influencing the lives of millions of people. The founding father of Mormonism is Joseph Smith, Jr., whose dates are 1805 to 1844. My research shows, however, that the stimulus behind Joseph Smith, Jr. was his father, Joseph Smith, Sr., his dates are 1771 to 1840. Smith Sr. experimented with mind-altering substances, probably went through Native American Indian rituals, wherein he experienced Datura, Amanita Muscaria, and Peyote. He undoubtedly introduced his son, Joseph Smith Jr., to these substances. Smith Sr. allegedly was one of the witnesses of the Golden Plates, but he surely knew the truth. Now, Smith Sr. certainly had a hand in the development of this cult, sort of like Abraham and his son Isaac of the Old Testament. His experimentation with hallucinogens set the ball in action, but Joseph Smith Sr. didn't know what to do with the ball. Uh, Smith Sr. was also a master Freemason, and you can look up the Freemasons' interest in mind-altering substances and ritual sex. You'll begin to see some connections. Now, Joseph Smith, Jr., which would not be the least unusual, became more heavily involved with different substances, especially peyote, grabbed the ball, and ran with it. It is possible that he could not escape the visions and voices once substances wore off. In other words, he went into the fantasy land of the functioning psychotic. We call these priests, ministers, rabbis, and imams, ayatollahs, and so on. He could still interact with others, but he believed he had special powers to find hidden objects, for which he had a magic hat. This hat aided him in his enterprise, his con game. Now I have it on good authority that it was a ridiculously large, white, large-brimmed, Stetson-like hat made of beaver pelts. In any case, he lost the hat one afternoon when the crowd he was entertaining with his ability to see or find lost objects brought his abilities into question. In fear of life and limb, he ran like the wind, leaving the hat suspended in midair, which then was whisked aside onto some recently deposited horse apples. In 1844, he lost his life for the very same reason, that is, pretending to have magical abilities. So, Joseph Smith, Jr. needed another power object that would help him see. Now, anyone participating in a gentle peyote ritual has a sense of knowing, and this could include knowing the whereabouts of lost objects. For Joseph Smith, Jr. never gave up the con game. And so he carried about in his pocket the facsimile of the peyote cactus, which he used as a stand-in for the actual experience with mescaline. 
Keep in mind, it is unlikely he would have been able to find anything while under the influence of mescaline, but after the fact, he could use this carved object as an amulet or talisman, as sort of a reconnection or flashback to the experience, so as to retrieve sounds or images and so on, and recover the lost object. So now let's get to the lost or missing golden plates that were allegedly given to Joseph Smith, Jr. by the angel. The golden tablets are none other than Anamita Muscaria. This is what the witnesses saw, and there are reports that there was some coercion to actually see quote, quote, plates. This is the Doubting Thomas story. But the story does not end here. These plates are now in my possession and under lock and key, and if you want to view them, you'll have to pay a fee. Now, the next player in this cult adventure is uh, Brigham Young, whose dates are 1801 to 1877. He was a friend of the Smiths and one of the witnesses to the plates. But he stopped the use of all these intoxicating substances, for he could see early on that there could only be one prophet, or the group would be full of prophets, and there can only be one celestial truth shared by all. I would characterize Brigham Young as a tyrant with little respect for women, and engrossed in his own self-importance. He, like the mythic hero Moses, was responsible for the deaths of many people. Time goes on, however, and we have the paternal grandson of Joseph Smith, Jr., that is Frederick Madison Smith, a highly educated man with a doctorate in psychology, third prophet president of the reorganized Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, renamed the Community of Christ in 2001, uh, serving from uh, 1915 until his death. I would have liked to have met this man. He knew the whole story, but ignored the deception, realizing that he was in a position to install the social gospel. This had a lot to do with social welfare, and you can look this up online. This will help you to understand uh, some of Mitt Romney's uh, political philosophy. In any case, Freddie Smith, the enlightened, reinstated what Brigham Young, the bully, outlawed, that is, communion with the energy that informs all. He discusses this second breath as a metaphor for the experience on the other side, using mind-altering substances in his book, The Higher Powers of Man. So now we have three possibilities. Story number one involves Joseph Smith, Jr. actually communing with an angel who gave him inscribed gold plates. Obviously, Joseph Smith, Jr. was on drugs or insane, or both certainly are a possibility. The story of being handed tablets finds its likeness in Moses and the tablets, but it's reminiscent of the story in Revelation also, where the angel swoops down and tells John the Evangelist that he has uh, a book for him to eat and then to prophesize as before. This is a reference to the mushroom. The book held by a saint is not the gospel of that saint. For gospel means God's spell or what happens when you consume the mushroom. The mushroom puts a spell on you. To put this in scientific terms, you're stoned. Now how about the second story? Joseph Smith Jr. was contacted by space aliens who singled him out as a special person to bring a message to humankind. The only thing I can say about this is that these aliens are pretty dumb and stupid and haven't done their research before contacting earthlings. Uh, get into some critical thinking here. If you wanted to get a message to the world, would you continue to do what you did in the past that didn't work? That is, contacting special people. None of these prophets uh, contacting angels and deities makes any sense until you consider the third story. The use of mind-altering substances uh, leading to hallucinations and visitations uh, from entities uh, considered to be outside the realm of human existence is a time-honored profession going back thousands and thousands of years. Schools these days uh, promote critical thinking, but apparently critical thinking only in certain areas. Critical thinking is not restricted. Think about what you believe about the cosmos and deities, and you will see that Christianity, and in this case Mormonism, was brought into being through the use of mind-altering substances, fraud, and deception. So what's it going to be? Reality or fantasy? It's your choice.